Rachel. And my passion and what I do is human trafficking. But just tell where you're from. Right? I'm from Serbia. Right um, and came here about 10 years ago. Um, we, in that region, we've had a large volume of people who were trafficked for the sex industry. Um, it was, they were mostly labeled as, like some of them were labeled as Russian male order brides, but um, a lot of them went to other places as well. And these women were supplied for the UN military. Um, they were given to UN military to be relaxation for the peacekeepers, um, which was after the war. The war ended. Which part of you and the UN now order to win? There yeah. was a huge scandal there and in um, the Congo, so the UN's better now. It was outrageous that they were doing this for years. Ago. Yeah, it was very hushed up, um, very hidden, and we had a whistle whistleblower who revealed all this information. However, it still keeps happening, and I will touch on that um, a little later on. The definition of human trafficking is, according to UN protocol, that is any person who is trafficked or transported between national and international borders for the, by the means of threat or coercion for the purposes of economic exploitation, prostitution, forced labor, slavery, or the removal of organs. This is not just about the sex industry, it's about restaurant workers, farm workers. This is about massage parlors, um, people who don't want to clean their own houses, so they get somebody um, from the outside. And of course, for the black market of um, organs. Currently, there are 27 million people in the world of traffic, and 50% of all of those are children. Estimated 700,000 to 4 million are trafficked annually, that's according to UN. And trafficking industry generates about 7 to 10 billion dollars a year. Currently, UN, the US input is about 54 million dollars a year. So you can tell that there's a huge disparity in how much we are giving in fight against this crime and how much this industry is actually breaking in. Information is all in estimates because it depends on whistleblowers. But our people, are, people who are trafficked are incredibly terrified of not only their abusers, but authorities too. Because a lot of times, they're in a country illegally. So they're afraid of police officers, any sort of person with authority, because they're on constant abuse and under threat um, for their life. This is Polaris Project. Uh, for a world without slavery. And you can see on the map where the prevalence of potential human trafficking uh, cases are. You can tell that Florida is kind of severe. We are the third in the United States for human trafficking. So one of us in this room has had to come in contact with somebody who was stolen. So just think about that. It's not a uh, mild thing. Human trafficking dates back to Roman and Biblical times. Reformers in Europe in the 19th century named it the white slave trade, which is what it's still called, um, that's the name that's still used in Europe. And it's named that way to distinguish it from the African American slavery. The information age, the thing that interests you the most is has made such significant impacts on this because it changed the methods and volume. So what used to happen is now completely accelerated by internet and cell phones. They facilitate the movement of the people, communication, organization between the perpetrators. And globalization increased the desire or the demand for the exotic. We have the thing that um, exotic is the and once you have a globalized, commodified market, any object is for sale, and if a woman is objectified, she's for sale too. So your mothers, your sisters, your girlfriends, everything's for sale because there is no value to a person, a human being. Child sex abuse, which goes back to Philippines and most of these places where it um, comes from. And then we come to this term, 
the, you'll see the eighth one, the horse of war, which I've already told you about how um, there are women supplied for military members as their relaxation or um, to fill up their needs while they're away from their significant others. Restrictive immigration policies also have effect on it because a lot of people come to, for example, the United States looking for the American dream, but they're actually used and abused. Like, I don't know if you guys seen last year in um, news, there was uh, this big problem with Walmart, Kmart, and Target. They were importing people from former Soviet uh, Russia Two United States kept them enslaved in the back rooms of Walmart, Targets, and Kmarts for them to clean the stores. They were mostly abused, and abused beaten, and raped. Um, and we found out about it last year, but it's been going on for more than five. Now this is something that's my project. We are the children of social media. And I call it the power of hashtag, which is the power of globalization. So I'm going to ask you to think of this as if you were a perpetrator, as if you were the one searching to abduct somebody or have somebody in your possession. If you go on search Instagram and hashtag girl, you'll get 150 million results. 150 million women have tagged their pictures with hashtag girl. So I can go in, find a teenager, open up their profile, and I can see their exact emotional state. If you think about the words, please follow me, and you think about the action, you're pl placing a little heart on their picture, right? This young woman immediately is telling you, I want love, and you're giving it, giving love by pressing that little heart on a picture. It's, you're not thinking about it because it's like quick action, but people don't think about the words and what the words mean. So if I'm her, I'm going to find that girl, open up her Instagram, and immediately be connected to her life. There's also these lovely little things on Instagram called geotags. If you go somewhere and you check into a place, I can now get a map of exactly where you are. I can press street view and I can get exact picture of your house. You've done most of the work for me. Now, through Kick, which you all know about Kick <coughs> also, I can create a bone. Kick is a little chat thing on Instagram where you can connect to people and talk to them, which is kind of like um, what I am chat rooms were, but it's now on an Instagram form, which also everybody puts their Facebook on Instagram too, so I can connect to you in any which form, and I can now create a bond. This next picture is the 12 signs, and it says 12 signs that an individual is being trafficked. I say it's 12 signs of somebody being created to bond with. If I'm a perp, I want to create an environment of love and friendliness with you. So I'm going to buy you things, I'm going to take you places, I'm going to tell you everything you want to hear. And then I'm going to tell you you own me. And that you have to work it off. And you have to work it off by providing sexual services. And this is number one. Uh, form by which human trafficking is done. They indebt them by, for example, bringing them to the United States or bringing them to the Western Europe and tell them that now that trip or that action has cost the X amount of money and you have to pay it off by providing uh, sexual services. Nobody's keeping track of how much you're paying off. You're there. You're now their slave. They can do whatever they want with you and they can kill you, they can discard of you at any point. In a lot of times, if you go through this and you read it, also the emphasis is on words, 
sexualized behavior, if you saw a young woman having sexualized behavior, the blame would be immediately be shifted on her. Nobody would think about who's behind the, sexual, the sexualized behavior. The behavior is immediately put onto the woman. Um, overly tired in class, you're immediately thinking this girl is a party animal. Uh, unexplained absences from class, signs of physical abuse such as birthmarks, uh, bruises, or cuts, which that should tell you immediately something's wrong. Um, and they also talk about older boyfriends, new friends with the different lifestyles. They talk about uh, gang affiliations, things like that. But this is how they create, how perpetrators create a bond with young women. Especially teenagers. Teenagers are at a very vulnerable state. And if you give them love and attention, they feel like they now owe you. Like for girls, when somebody does something nice for us, we feel like we have to repay them. Um, it's our nurturing nature. It's because we're the ones bringing life, because we're supposed to have children. Uh, people use this, perpetrators use this all the time. Men use this all the time. Sorry guys, but I am a feminist. If you suspect somebody um, of being trafficked, this is the National Human Trafficking Resource Center, and that's the phone number. They're not just in the sex industry. They're in restaurants, they're on farms, uh, Walmarts and Kmarts of the world. And there are efforts trying to prevent this, and they're very young, young efforts. But now there's a curveball with the cybercrime, because I know this is your primary target, so I'm going to tell you why cybercrime is so bad. It's the no number one and the biggest growing cyber activity. It's the number one cybercrime, because somebody, it doesn't matter where you are anymore. You can be here in the United States, and somebody can be in China, or somebody can be in Russia, and you're connected. You're connected through a hashtag, you're connected through internet. So perpetrators are connected in the same way. They can let each other know what's going on and move their operations within minutes. There's nobody to stop them. I'm a realist in the political world, and I believe there's anarchy in the international sphere. Nobody's talking to each other. European Commission uh, is trying to get the European countries to agree on just speaking to each other first through European Union on this issue, and then to try to talk to the United States while the United States is still fighting to get enough funding to fight this crime. So it has to start from us. It has to start from us having the enough awareness the, the, these things are out there. It has to come from movies like 12 Years a Slave um, for us to be aware that slavery is not dead. Slavery is alive and kicking and it's increasing constantly each year. And this is the 21st century, so I'm urging you please pay attention. So let's try not to have slavery in the 21st century because I don't want to go down in the history as like people who didn't do anything about it or people who didn't even care because we don't see it, we don't think it happens, we don't care about it because it's not in front of us. It is in front but of us. But it is in front of us. And what happens if you call that hotline? It's a Polaris project which will connect you to um, a live person. There's no waiting. And they ask you questions, which if you look at this, hand up here, there is a set of questions you can ask them. They will send somebody or they will also send the local um, police. police. But like I said, we don't even have, the, the public doesn't have enough awareness, let alone the law, law enforcement. We're still trying to get funding. So it's very dangerous at the same time because if they catch you, you are most likely dead. 
If they catch you whistleblowing, that's why all the information is an estimate. It depends on people speaking up about this. And if they, the punishment is severe, it's not, it's not you're locked up without food for a couple of days. This is extreme physical harm and that um, these are people who are forcing young women to see ATM customers a day, every day, for years. It's like being raped 18 times a day for like years. That's not a very nice people.